<laughs> Hello fellow YouTubers. Uh, today's a uh, Monday, October 15. And um, it's still wet. Wet, wet, wet. There was another 36 mil in the gauge uh, this morning, which takes us up to uh, 231 millimetres in six days. So we're only uh, 69 mil short of a foot of a foot of rain in any given time, or given period. That's a lot of rain, isn't it? Yes, and there's, there's more forecast. Um, unfortunately, only uh, some of the drought affected areas in my home state of New South Wales have uh, had some relief, and some have not. So the drought has still got a grip uh, on a lot of areas in New South Wales, as it has in a lot of other states and territories. Hmm. So, but along the coast, the drought's finished on the coast here. Yes, so we go all up and down the coast. I saw the uh, news uh, later this afternoon, and there was a story from Wollongong, and uh, it was raining down there. So yeah, all up and down the coast, there's plenty of rain. And but anyway, that's the way it goes. Uh, about two minutes ago, the rain was coming straight down, uh, and it's almost. It's almost uh, vertical. I oh, know, a little bit of a breeze. There wasn't a bit of a breeze a few minutes ago. Anyhow, I'll give you a look. See over there, uh, where do you think it? There. See where the table and chairs is over there? The table and chair, well that's where another pond is. And uh, my dearly beloved wants me to build a little bridge over there. And also you see the door over there next to the gong. Well, my wife wants me to put an awning over that, but I have got an awning down behind the uh, shed with the, uh, the lizard on. That's where we got uh, our push box. So I'm going to pull it out and cut it to size and mount it over there. And the reason she wants it mounted over there is because the gutter is down, the end of the gutter is down near the bars there, to the right. No, that's the left. It's the right. And when you get a great volume of water, it splashes over because it, the water quickly goes down to the end cap there and it just builds up and splashes over and it runs underneath the door. So I've got to put another pocket in there. Yeah. So um, as you can see and uh, here, <laughs> I've got some jobs to do. I have got quite a few jobs to do as a matter of fact. Um, hands-on sort of things, you know, and uh, the, the awning and the little bridge over the pond there. I don't know, women come up with these ideas. Yeah, but with this weather I can't do anything. And uh, that's okay. And tomorrow I've got to get up early, got to drag my sad and sorry uh, body out of bed early, got to take the, my wife's car down for a vehicle inspection. And uh, and then I might zap into town because I just got a phone call this afternoon that the uh, uh, the kit is available for the hospital. Now that's that'll be for the colonoscopy and gastroscopy. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Anyhow, so we'll see what happens with that. But you know, um, the worst thing about having the uh, colonoscopy and gastroscopy you know, is <laughs> it's the um, the cleansing of the bowel. Yes, I've been through it before, and that's the most uh, unpleasant part of it. You know, another reading about uh, Jeremy and his uh, day unlike any other day of just another day and uh, because in yesterday's episode poor Jeremy had swallowed uh, three cold tablets 
and midway between writing his head realised something was wrong. Shh! He sputtered. Then started to cough and gag. <coughs> In a panic, he rushed to and lowered his head into the sink just in case he vomited, coughing and gagging and sputtering and spitting as he gripped the edge of the sink white knuckled. As the involuntary spasm continued, he began to feel lightheaded. And thought he might black out, but of course he would. <laughs> The blood rushed and gorged his head, <laughs> bulged his eyes, <laughs> and tears welled and blurred his vision. <laughs> he was fighting for every breath now, gasping and coughing, heaving and sputtering, hawking and spitting. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Heightening his fears suddenly made all the worse when he felt a dampness in his crotch. Go oh. <coughs> Gordo, spit. Gordo, fuck. <laughs> Orc, spit. Fucking mighty. Gas pants, sniff, sniff. <sighs> now a bloke's pissed himself. <laughs> poor, poor Easing upright, he dropped his left hand and to and felt the front of his shorts. There was a damp spot. But it wasn't wet and he sighed with relief. <sighs> Thankful for the second small mercy of this day of just another day. But as he silently counted the second... Oh, I got the wrong one. I'm on the wrong bell. <laughs> Picking up a glass of water, he sipped and swallowed coughed, felt a tickle in his throat, sipped and swallowed again, held his breath and waited for something to happen. Jeremy expected his throat might convulse like it did when he had the hiccups. And he had found holding one's breath and dry swallowing over and over again was a good way to combat those spasms. But as he silently counted the seconds away, and twenty, swallow, and twenty-one, and twenty-two, swallow, nothing happened. So he slowly exhaled through his mouth, <sighs> cleared his throat with a vociferous, um, <clears throat> sip, swallow, relaxed and breathed. The drama was over. But what had caused it in the first place, he thought. What did I swallow? Only the tablets. Didn't feel like a tablet, though. Must have been something else. But what? He picked up the blister strip. Yeah, that'd be right. A piece of foil. Nothing gets past Jeremy. But of course, it would be. And knowing my luck, it'll probably get stuck in my bowel and block it. And won't that be something to look forward to? Again! <laughs> yeah. Jeremy had had a block bowel two years ago and spent three days in hospital. Sound familiar? Yeah. Uh, he hadn't minded being there. After all, he was where he belonged and had been in good hands. Nor did he care too much about all the tests the nasal gastric tube, the rectal probe, enema, needles, and the bland diet of apple juice and jelly. Mm. But the sheer gut-wrenching pain and the vomiting of compacted faecal matter at the onset of the affliction was something he'd never want to experience again. No, 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 no. Never. Ever. And it would be the thought of that that would plague his mind until he was sure he had passed the damn thing. You know what that means, don't you? To make sure. Yeah. Rather messy. Investigation. 
Better start taking an extra dose of the fibre supplement for a while, Jeremy Olson. <laughs> Pulling free tissues from the box sitting atop the refrigerator, he dab dried his eyes, blew his nose, <clears throat> sniffed, blew his nose again, <clears throat> then hawked and spat a wad of mucus into a tissue, then compressed the tissues into a wadden place in his shirt pocket. Returning to the sink, he turned on the cold water tap, flipped his cupped hands, filled his cupped hands with water and sluiced his face once, twice, three times, eyes closed and relishing the rejuvenating effect. <sighs> he muttered as he turned off the tap. That feels better. And he did feel better as he drew the palms of his hands down his cheeks and flicked the water into the sink. Felt better still after he had towel dried his face and hands and retrieved the water tissues from his pocket and lobbed it free and met his smack bang dag center into the kitchen bin. Yeah! Oh yeah! He said, shooting his arms above his head. Give that man a cigar! <laughs> yep! Good old Jers was feeling pretty well okay and had a smile on his face after the trials and tribulations on this early afternoon. of just another day. There was just a hint of a twinge from his tooth. Uh, <laughs> none whatsoever from his tongue uh, or his throat and except for a mild ache in his neck just below the jaw, Jeremy felt like he was ready to tackle just about anything. Picking up the glass with the intention of drinking what remained before attending to the carpet, Jeremy had a spur of the moment thought to rinse out and freshen his mouth with a vigorous swish, gargle and spit. <laughs> <laughs> and but alas, there was no swishing, not even the slightest hint of a swirl. For the very instant the cold water made contact with his tooth, Jeremy screamed, FUCK! <laughs> but it sounded more like, FUCK! <laughs> As he got us in the water, and the profanity out of his mouth at the same time. The pain was absolutely obscene, as if a blade had been thrust into and through his gum. Mm. Mm. His knees buckled and he stumbled forward, clutching his head with both hands as he moaned and groaned and cursed. Make pain your fend. <laughs> I'm surprised no one commented on that. I thought it was funny, but no, no one said a word. Oh, freaking hell, he screamed. What can I do to stop this pain? He picked up the blister strip of cold apples and put two into the palm of his right hand. And satisfied there was not a piece of foil lurking. I'm not going to catch Jeremy twice. <laughs> Tossed them into his mouth and chewed the tablets with his front teeth before moving the paste to his ailing tooth with the little finger of his right hand. And then waited waited with his forehead resting on his folded forearms, resting atop the breakfast bar, like it shielding his eyes when kids played hide and go seek. With his head down and eyes closed, Jeremy expected that if the horrid, sharp, the bitter taste of the crushed tablets was any indication, that he should have relief in no time at all. But as he waited, feeling little if any relief, and trying desperately, but failing to make pain his friend, he noticed that not only could he feel the throbbing pain, but see it, like intermittent pulses of coloured light flashing, on off, on off, through the miasma of tiny particles that flooded the semi-darkness of his closed eyelids. After several minutes of enduring pain like you wouldn't believe and with his tongue tingling, swollen and burning from the residue and with his mouth as dry as a sun bleached bone that he was, he was afraid to swallow for fear of choking, but of course he would. He stood upright, swayed momentarily, coughed, <coughs> winked, then made his way to and stood before the kitchen sink. 
With legs. Like legs, legs. Not thin, legs. If legs are felt like jelly and pain so intense, his entire head ached. He filled the glass and poked his tongue into the water, then spat. Poked and spat again and again and again, then swallowed. With his tongue now moist, he manoeuvred the tip to the water of paste and flicked. Flinched and groaned, spat and swallowed. To hell with that, the pain was just too agonising. Poor bugger. Then, a thought. Clothes, he mumbled. He remembered when he was a kid that one could buy a tiny glass vial of liquid clove extract from the chemist. And what a relief a saturated swab of cotton wool had when placed on an offending molar. Mmm, like I mean, get well, I'm not going to get it. A Bex powder worked uh, wonders too. But he didn't have any of those. Did anyone use them these days? And besides, they and the magic fluid probably aren't available anymore. When he wasn't in a fit state to drive anyhow. No, driving into town wasn't an option. So he decided on the only alternative. If he could find them, then he'd make an appointment with the dentist once the pain subsided. He knew his wife kept a plethora of herbs and spices in the pantry, so he wasted no time <laughs> in opening wide the two doors and, thank Christ, first time lucky. There, chin high and to the far left and front, sitting on the middle shelf in a small clear glass bottle that made identification easy on this absolutely woeful afternoon of just another day were the clothes. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Retrieving the bottle, Jeremy popped the lid, shook and tapped a half a dozen pieces onto the palm of his right hand, and without hesitation or reservation tossed the lot into his mouth. And move them into position using the tip of his tongue. Then sat down on a high backed kitchen stool at the edge of the breakfast bar and once again waited. On and on and on the pain persisted. In tune it seemed to the beat of his heart. From one throbbing beat of agony to the next and on to the other. Relentless and unforgiving. If the devil himself had suddenly materialised before him, Jeremy would have gladly sold his soul for a few miserly minutes, free of the pain. Leaning forward, he rested his elbows atop the breakfast bar and tightly clamped his palms to his cheeks and pushed vertically. You know, hang on, but this will do. Uh, and pushed vertically, tightening the skin, mouth open, eyes closed. He resembled the face of Munch's famous painting, The Scream. He could taste just a hint of clove now, as the saliva began to flow. A promising sign that maybe, just maybe the cloves would quickly break down and salvation might be just around a not too distant corner. And there we shall leave it. Leave it for another day. And I want to thank you for watching and listening. And until next time. Uh, bye for now.